Uh, there are three questions uh, that this committee asks of uh, everyone who comes before us. Uh, I will ask uh, you, uh, Minister Pekoski, if you could uh, just respond briefly with a yes or no to each of these questions. First, is there anything you are aware of in your background that might present a conflict of interest with the duties of the office to which you have been nominated? No, sir. Second, do you know of anything, personal or otherwise, that would in any way prevent you from fully and honorably discharging the responsibilities of the office to which you have been nominated? No, sir. And lastly, do you agree without reservation to comply with any request or summons to appear and testify before any duly constituted committee of Congress, if you're I, confirmed? I do. Great. Thank you. Minister Abkowski, uh, you and I have uh, spoken at length about concerns raised from the uh, Muslim and Arab American communities um, and about many of the TSA implemented lists and policies and programs that can lead to additional screenings uh, at the, the airport. Uh, we can both agree that, uh, that security for the airline travel is of the utmost importance, and that's something I'm focused on 100 percent, as I know you are. But there are also multiple documented cases of individuals remaining on these lists for over a decade, uh, even though there is no evidence whatsoever that they pose any sort of threat. So my question for you, sir, is uh, please tell me what steps you're taking to address concerns that these policies disproportionately impact communities, and ha certain communities, and uh, have done so for at least 20 years. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much uh, for raising the issue and, and for our conversation uh, last week. And this is something that I really do want to address completely and fully because I think it's very important for an agency that has security responsibility that directly impacts two plus million people every single day in the United States to have the trust of that traveling population to know that the procedures we have and, and the processes we use um, are fair, equitable, um, uh, consider civil rights, liberties, and privacy concerns of every single traveler. Um, I commit to you that I will do everything that I can, uh, which is substantial, um, to address this issue. Yeah, you mentioned in your opening statement um, the uh, designation of a direct uh, report to provide input, and I fully endorse uh, that idea. Um, I, we do have an Office of Traveler Engagement within TSA that is a direct report um, to the administrator, but I do want to make sure that we ensure that those lines of communication are robust to the point of rather than waiting for somebody to come to us, that we have a regular scheduled engagement. Um, the other thing that I, I, I promise to do is to, uh, to visit uh, the communities in the state of Michigan and the state of Minnesota um, to introduce myself to those communities and to begin to establish a relationship with them at my level. Uh, in addition to the relationships that exist at other levels within the agency. I want people to feel that if they have a, um, a question about how TSA pr processes uh, their security, um, that we listen carefully, we get the facts that are there, and then make sure when we go back um, that we aren't unfairly um, uh, causing additional process to any particular traveler. Um, the other thing, sir, that we discussed that I uh, am already looking at is um, in our communications with travelers through the TRIP program, through the redress program, I think we can improve um, the, the, what we communicate back to passengers to clearly explain what, 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 what the letter says and what it means and what it doesn't mean um, for them. And so, sir, you have my full commitment uh, to address this. I know um, uh, Commissioner Magnus was, was up in Michigan uh, just recently. He came back, had a very, very good experience up there, and I look uh, forward to partnering with him and the secretary um, to present a, a, a DHS team uh, that can begin to address this problem completely. Well, excellent. Good to hear that. I appreciate your commitment, and we'll look forward to hosting you uh, in Michigan uh, in, the, in the near term. Thank you for your willingness to do that. Uh, as our nation continues to recover from COVID-19 pandemic, TSA's uh, frontline staff, as you're well aware, continue to work tirelessly to ensure that our system remains safe uh, and secure. However, significant parts of the TSA workforce uh, are, I think, are, are underpaid uh, relative to other similarly situated federal employees uh, and other agencies, which has impeded uh, TSA's ability to retain the qualified workers that are so essential for us. Uh, so my question to you, sir, is um, I appreciate your support of a proposal in the President's budget to address this longstanding inequity that would provide our frontline TSA staff with an uh, increase in their base pay. Uh, but I'd like you to address what is the impact of this compensation and benefit disparities on our frontline TSA workforce 
And uh, why do we need this uh, action in order to rectify this situation? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is uh, my number one priority uh, as the administrator currently and, and if confirmed as my administrator going forward is to fix this pay issue. Um, as you mentioned, our, our frontline transportation security officers, the uniformed officers that travelers see every time they travel through a security checkpoint, uh, on average they get paid 30 percent less than their counterparts in the rest of the federal government. That's fundamentally unfair. It inhibits our ability to recruit and to retain talent. And so I think this is the most important thing facing us um, that we need to address. Uh, as you mentioned, the President included in the FY23 budget request um, uh, to improve pay across the board uh, in TSA, not above any other federal agency, but equitable uh, with every federal agency. And, and I just think it's, it's so important that we do that. We have uh, in our screening workforce about a 20 percent attrition rate, um, and that's way too high. And, and when I watch at average levels of experience in our checkpoints go from five years to four years to three, um, that's a security concern as well. Uh, so I would appreciate your uh, continued strong support uh, of pay equity. It's, it's really um, so critically important for the success of TSA going into the future. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Last week, uh, this committee held a hearing to examine the threat uh, to the homeland posed by unmanned uh, aircraft systems as well as a potential expansion of uh, authorities to counter uh, these uh, UAS uh, threats. Part of the legislation that I'm working on currently with uh, Senator Johnson would provide explicit authorization for the TSA to conduct uh, CUAS activities to protect transportation facilities and assets. Mr. Pekoski, my, my question to you is, could you explain the UAS threat that airports are currently facing uh, for this uh, committee to fully understand and why TSA needs these authorities and you need them now to maintain safe and secure air travel? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, air airports are facing uh, UAS um, challenges every single day. Um, and just yesterday, we had three reports from pilots of uh, sightings of UAS as either they were landing or taking off. Um, two or three days ago, we had a helicopter um, that had a collision uh, with the UAS in Pennsylvania. Uh, when we conduct our test beds, we have two test beds underway, one in Miami and one in Los Angeles that's just beginning. Um, those test beds show us that the reports we get from pilots that I just mentioned are just the tip of the iceberg of UAS activity in and around airports because we're testing our detect, track, and identify equipment to get a good picture of what is operating around those airports. We've done a lot of work on this, um, but there is so much more work to do. Um, as, as you said, um, you know, our authorities expire very shortly. They expire in October. If our authorities expire without being renewed or refreshed or enhanced, um, all of those test bed activities that we currently do and all the coordination work that we currently do uh, will stop. And this is, a, this is a growing threat to our aviation system. Uh, and we need to continue this work apace. And I, I appreciate uh, your focus and your emphasis on providing um, direct authority to the agencies. This is, this is something that we need to be able to, to respond to uh, on an instant, and having those direct authorities will greatly enable that. Thank you.